So, <laughs> if, happy Valentine's. You don't want to have the mic on, Annie. <laughs> I have an announcement to make after the first ten minutes, so we don't have we don't we don't get demonetized. But I'm gonna hold it in. Oh my what? god! How we'll dare tell you? you. When. She <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! Well, there goes our demon. Yeah, bleep it. <laughs> bleep it. Wait. Okay. So. Obviously, the last two episodes, I've like shared a lot about my childhood, right? <laughs> so this weekend, I went to my parents' house. They welcomed me back in. <laughs> and my reluctantly, I'm scared to say this because I feel like it might be triggering. But my dad basically told me that I was so full of <laughs> that now he doesn't believe anything about Annie and Kalila's abuse. <laughs> <laughs> He thinks you guys are both making everything. Well, if I want to say this, I was actually going to tell you your <laughs> too. I was seeing your tweets. I was like, are you kidding me? What tweets are? You're like, as a abused, as an neglected child. I did not say She's that. like taking this role on so fast. I was like, oh my God. Well, I know because now I'm so, I'm really. Murray, I'm with you. She's full of it. This girl, you can't just be diagnosed, ab abandoned by your family that's done everything for you. They, they have your you can't have, you can't un have your whole brand be that you talk to your parents every day and also be the abandoned child. <laughs> I, I'm very, obviously very confused. I really was quick to go with Katie's diagnosis. I do think there's truth to it though. And I think, Kalila, you believe me, right? A wound is a wound is a wound. <laughs> I don't care if it is that kind of wound or my kind of wound. I think that's all relative. And if that's the worst thing that happened to you and it affects you, I can't judge your wound. We don't care, but we can't judge it. We don't give a <laughs> about it. We're in every hole. Oh no, uh, they didn't bring you the warmer milk. You wanted the warmer milk, it was only the cold milk. My mom, whatever, we don't need to get back. <laughs> no, but it's so it. funny. What did your mom say? Was your mom like, you little She, what did she say? She's like, oh wow, you really, uh, I just. I <laughs> that know. is the perfect Mary impression. She's like, are you kidding? I, you know, I read to you every night and I'm just like, yes, I know that. Like, It wasn't it, the book I wanted though. It, no, it's just more complicated. <laughs> we did agree. Also, my sister, has validated what I said. My sister is like, no, we they never talked to us. Like, and also my sister and I both, I realized very similarly when we were teens, always slept out at someone else's house, always were with our boyfriends. So I think they're, I think me and my sister finally agree on something. Maybe they just wanted some grandkids. They're like, let's knock these kids up early. <laughs> You can always, little teen pregnancies. You can always tell too, like if you're like around teenagers, the ones who never want to go home. Like that always makes me sad when they linger at the gym for four hours. And you're like, why is this kid still here after four hours? They don't want to go home. Yeah, but when you're a teen, it's like you're meeting new people. It's like you, there's no one to fuck at your house. You know what I mean? Unless, <laughs> 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 unless you're me. Lila was like, I was torn. She was like, I want to go out and fuck guys, but I also want to stay home. But I also have a really good electric toothbrush at home. <laughs> It hasn't been 10 minutes because I really yeah, want to announce that my up. pussy is fucking burning today. Okay. <laughs> Wait, why? I, I I don't know. A UT? No, not a UT. A yeasty? Um, doesn't feel like a yeasty. A it herpes? Just, it's not a herpes. I checked. Um, it is just like very irritated. Very, very She's irritated. Mad. Do you know what? Syphilis? Um. No, I'm not syphilitic, Carlos. I, I, it, that's why that happened to me. That's why you of had course. syphilis. Yeah, you've had syphilis. Yeah, yeah. He flew too high so to the sun. So is Trump to someone's okay. son. He wait, flew too high to someone's wait, son. That's what makes it okay. Wait, how did? Because he's been with uh, many models. Did you know immediately, or were you like that guy who had a sudden weird rash on his hip, and you're like, "What is this? That's not going yes, away." Yes, exactly. Wait, isn't that secondary syphilis when it's a rash other places? That's when you get dry hum from the side it's from his weird <laughs> sex parties he goes to at casting directors' houses. Wait, so oh Carlos God. or Trump? Carlos. Oh. Oh. Carlos probably has been at the same sex party. I'm trying time. to go to one called Kinky Rabbit. I I don't think I'll get in. There. You should trump your hair. Trump probably has the same I hair. I know I can do the Trump hair. I don't want to, though. Thank you to our sponsor, ZocDoc. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Go to ZocDoc.com slash trash and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash trash. ZocDoc.com slash trash.
30 million women are impacted by weakened or thinning hair. If you're among them, know you're not alone and there's a solution that you can trust to deliver results. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code TRASH to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time plus free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code TRASH. Hey, Sluggies. Such an amazing, fun show. Happy Valentine's Day. We love you. You guys are all so cute. I love meeting you on the road. You can see me next in Washington, D.C. at the Comedy Law, February 24th and 25th. I'll be in Seattle, Washington, March 10th and 11th. Tampa, Florida, March 17th and 18th. Toronto, Canada, March in April. I'll be in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. I'll be in Salt Lake City and I'll be in Calgary. I have a bunch of other dates that we're adding all the time. So please go to annieletterman.com slash shows to see that. The meet and greets are fire. Everything's incredible. Also, please watch Annie Wood. It's every Thursday. It's been incredible. I've had all some of my favorite people in the whole world on it. And it's just a fun addition to Trash Tuesday. I'll see you guys on Thursday and next Tuesday. Okay, let's talk about syphilis. <laughs> yes. Let's dive. How and when and like, what was the vibe? It was like four and a half years ago. And I got a call from my ex-wife and she was like, I have syphilis. And I was like, oh, then I must have syphilis. When you were breaking up? Yeah, like after. And um, I went to the doctor and they were like, yeah, you definitely have it. And by doctor, I went to the West Hollywood uh, clinic for free. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, oh my God. What was the criteria? You're you know. LGBT. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's insane. It's like, you don't have to be gay to get in for free. Um, no, but I went and I got treatment and they give you two shots. And I've told this to a couple of my friends, but they're super thick and they do it in your ass. Mm -hmm. And it like. So it just went right in muscle memory. It doesn't go in your ass. <laughs> you don't get a shot in your asshole. That's insane. <laughs> so, yeah. And then after that, I couldn't really walk for a couple of days. It was really painful on my butt. And then I was OK and I don't have it anymore. Actually, I think it's dormant. It's yeah. You didn't mm -hmm. feel the symptoms of it. She just told you she had it. You didn't get the drippy. No, dick. I had the, no, I realized, I was like, is that what that fucking is? Oh my God. Wait, which one's drippy, the chlamydia or? Yeah, it wasn't yeah, drippy. Yeah, syphilis, syphilis is actually very different. It's a very different manifestation. It can make you go crazy Did too. Did it yeah. kill a famous mobster? It killed a lot of royals is what I yeah. thought. Like Al Capone. Yeah. It's what killed the queen. Oh, not what killed. She's not a mobster. Oh, she's a royal. <laughs> I I watched this show on PBS called Victoria, and um, her husband's brother was syphilitic. I think I'm so that's kind of cool. Like you don't really hear people walk around and be like, oh, I have syphilis, but I see it on the billboards in Hollywood. Don't brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen me with crabs. <laughs> I could not tell more people. <laughs> It's so funny to get diagnosed with one that goes away. You know what I mean? Right. Because it's like herpes. You got to like build up the courage to tell everyone, you know? Yeah. But even with like HIV now, it's no longer a death sentence. I know. Everything's fine. Is that it's, true? It's, yeah. It's no longer a death sentence. You can. Yeah. You, and in fact, you can be on Truvada, like a prophylactic medication, um, have a full vibrant sex life with a partner who has who is HIV positive and never get it. Like, there's just so many things. That it's just not a big deal now. What do you think is going on with... I mean, it is a big deal. I shouldn't say that because people are like, who cares about HIV? I mean, it's a very <laughs> serious thing. But, like, you know, it's it's not, like, the big, you know... If you yeah. get AIDS from listening to this show, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not our fault. I can't, I can't claim... Unless you got it from me specifically. <laughs> That's how I got it. <laughs> um, Kalila, what do you think is going on with your panini? <laughs> your sandwich. I, your pressed sandwich. Your panini press. I think. Um, your Panero. Okay. There Here was. Pick two. I, I need is you guys to solve this Is it a bread bowl now? No, I tried this <laughs> new. some chowder in there? Broccoli the cheddar. Chunky? Okay. Can I tell you what it looks like? Half a sandwich. Tell or show? <laughs> Well, I, I tried to smell get some chips. Let's get in that cheese dip. <laughs> Apple or chips? <laughs> <laughs> Me and you on Panera. Woo! Don't bring up Panera at <laughs> this time of day. <laughs> um, so I used 
an old bottle of lube that I haven't used in a long time. And I want to ask you guys. Are you putting like it inside? You're not supposed to insert the bottle. Well, usually I just masturbate like up top and I never put anything inside. But this time around, I was getting a little feisty. Like I'm in my new place. So I might have like fisted myself with old lube. Did you do the suction cup? Did you fuck the wall? No, I didn't. I didn't. But I did for the first time stick fingers in there with your old... own fingers. Yeah, my own fingers. Did you put one I in have, your ass? Hold on. I have so many. But it's questions. such old lube. Like it's it, it's like I had to dust it off. So it, the, does is it? It expires. I always think about expire? no with lube too. You don't want to bring rollover lube to a new relationship too. Like you don't want to like <laughs> you know what I mean. Like the lube goes with the breakup, and you can't like be like oh here let me get this half used. Is that a rule? Glide. Yeah, it's my rule. <laughs> rollover new, lube. New rule. Why? Before. Why no rollover lube? There's fingerprints of others. It's too much <laughs> emotional. It's too like yeah. It's like. Your fingerprints are still on there. They're still on here. Is this like an argument for having short nails? Like you go in yourself? Well, this is why I usually don't go in at all because I have a very sensitive flower. The pH gets thrown very quickly. So I keep my nails very short and I don't masturbate or put anything up there. But this time I did. Well, that's like how many? <laughs> <laughs> Esther, close your eyes. She'll put them inside you. You have to count. Wait, Esther, I'm so pissed that you started waxing your pussy because I feel like I have so many, like, I just have so many, like, Harry Bush memories of you that are, like, oh, that and so my crazy. instinct to make fun of you is always, like, Big Bush. Wait, why did you wax. start waxing? I, like... She got pretty friends. Here's the thing. She was hanging out with me all the time over the pandemic. <laughs> She grew a bush out. She's like, I'm with pigs. She's got beautiful <laughs> friends now. This is a weird thing that I've realized. Like, I used to be so comfortable in my own filth. And I don't know if it's like a maturity thing or if it's like... Dave you know, threatened to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I was thinking about it today. Like, I, I don't want to be too graphic, but I'll just say I could really like be comfortable days without bathing we more than days without being, right right you know? Stop i don't want to use announcing this like we didn't already know this everyone <laughs> right. knows this you have to come out as a clean person right but now. now i literally like to feel it's also it's i i liken it to you know how if you're at home and they say you work from home like dress like you're going to work mm -hmm. like that's sort of i shave my legs now i shave my underarms like i want to have are it you all working on the farm bitch <laughs> 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 How are you dressed for? Good morning. <laughs> she works at Pacific Sun at the Pac Sun at the mall. <laughs> Pacific Sun. Sorry, that, I'm sorry. I use its formal name. Pacific Sun. That's a where? government name. <laughs> <laughs> I caught myself at the end. I couldn't do the wear. Um, but do you wax? I yeah. Look. <clears throat> oh my God, she talked about waxing. That's why you're waxing. Oh, because of Kalila. Yeah, I'm like, why did I forget? I, the thing is, is, oh, that's, wow, very, oh, round. Literally, it's the same as when Bobby pulls his pants down, the exact same <laughs> amount. <laughs> yeah, I, my pussy's always uh, pretty waxed. And um, oh, I God. haven't gone unwaxed in a long time only because um, I have really weird, you guys know this, it's like weird hair patterns. It's very mm -hmm. uh, sparse up top and it kind of, it has the, it's, it's the, the, ballet, the it's, chemo. The uh, fryer tuck. The fryer tuck, yes. It's not a good look. I don't have, I would rather have a full bush, but my hair patterns are weird down there. It's like, yeah, it's very irregular. Do you ever leave anything when you wax? No. Me either. You said you no do. No tips. No. <laughs> Never leave a tip. Um, <laughs> I, um, no, that's how you really have to tip. Oh, no, I know. I it's always... hush money. I'm like, don't fucking tell anyone you just saw there. <laughs> it's it's hush money. You and me and Todd, okay? I you, me, and that hemorrhoid? <laughs> yes. Yikes. I literally pay her double. Like that's the service <laughs> yes. I go so hardcore baller on. Well, I had a woman, a waxer in New York who recognized me. Like she gets like 50 clients a fucking day. You know, she's like high volume waxer. She recognized me on the subway and I was like, am I flattered by this? <laughs> or was my vajasshole like so <laughs> monumental and memorable that she was like, I remember this crazy bitch. This is just bringing up such a horrible memory this weekend. My mom was like, I saw my gynecologist out at a restaurant. And then my dad was like, he didn't recognize her till she bent over. <laughs> <laughs> See, those were the jokes we were missing as a kid. They were in the other room just cracking up. You were like, ah. Oh, that was another thing my dad said. He's like, you didn't want to leave your room. You wanted to be in your room. No, but that's your whole thing. You want to be invited out, but you don't want to go. Yeah. Oh, you, you are my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to be the, you want the invite and then you decide. Yeah, that's true. That's what everyone wants, I think. Wait, Carlos, can we, can you search, can lube cause itching? Mm-hmm. 
Or can you be allergic to water based? You busted up your pussy, bitch. You added, was it hardened? No, it wasn't. There was no crystallized at the tip. It just started. What brand was it? I don't want to say because it is a really great brand. Yeah, it seems like you can be addicted, or not addicted. Um. <laughs> Ew. Carlos. Carlos wow. is just chugging. He's just, it's not even wine in that glass, it's just lube. It's Astrolite. <laughs> um, it can contain uh, chemicals and stuff that can cause irritation. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. You I need put- like a, an all natural one or something. Well, you know. Coconut oil, don't they say? Yeah, but spit. coconut oil can fuck you up too. Jenna Jameson always said spit was the best lube. Spit is the best lube. Oh, like yeah. the back of the throat. Like the gag spit is the best. Spitting on your own pussy though. It's like, what am I in hot yoga? (laughs) (laughs) I'm the bread bowl. (laughs) bowl. (laughs) Like, come on now. Someone asked me to do hot yoga high. What do we, is that, is really? And I I, I quit hot yoga. Yeah, I had a We're out. Oh, you are? You're Mm -hmm. out? Yeah, we're out. Oh, I'm glad we're talking about this. Yeah. Why? I I, I loved it before. Do yeah. it. Have your hot yoga phase. Honestly, I think everyone should have it. I don't it. want a phase. I just, someone invited me. Oh, is that a Skims? I have that. The blue bra under? Yes. Someone, the shirt that doesn't quite fit. I was like, oh my God, I need a bra. I have 50 sunglasses. I just can't tell like high hot yoga. Will it either be like so e- magically easy because you're high? No, you're going to fall over. It's going to mm-hmm. fuck with your, but it's still fine. You're so hot. You're going to not be high when you leave. Like I used to go to hot yoga to when I was like weed addicted, when I was like smoking weed during the morning. And then I was like, oh my God, I have sets. I don't want to be high for my sets. I would go do hot yoga to like sober it up to get it out of my system. You're sweating everything out of your entire body. Yeah. And Esther, you already have low blood pressure Thank like you. me. <laughs> and so I get Your like blood pressure is so skinny. Thank you so much. <laughs> I am a pick me girl with my blood pressure. So <laughs> yeah, I feel like your you, pressure is high though. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in like uh, some of these hot yoga studios here that are like 100 and 203 are not. I I I just don't think they're that healthy. I I go to the ones that are maybe like slightly heated, like 91, 92, and those feel good because you can get into deeper stretches. But the ones that are over 100, I'm like, this is just like, I'm, I don't think I'm burning calories. I'm just dehydrating myself. I was doing it to like, I think the reason I was attracted to it was because it was getting me out of my head because you're just so hot. You can't like think. But then I realized it's activating all my, my cluster headache, like pain map, like the map of where my pain goes. It's activating this thing here. And I have to think back and I have to be real, but every time I get my cluster, it's, it's every two years. It's always when I'm very active, I'm very fit. And every period of my life when I'm doing that, I'm hot yoga is a part of it. Mm. So I'm just, I have to be done with it. Wow. Okay. I just have to be I done was with done it. with it too, but then I would like, this became this interesting invitation and idea of getting high and I'm like, maybe I'll do try that. Then try it. Yeah. Try it. I'll it, report I, back. People love it. And I, there's been times in my life where I've loved it too, but my body's like, no bitch. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I like to generate my own heat. Mm. I like to know what my body is doing. I don't like to enter an environment that's forcing my body to be a certain way. And that's why she left the Philippines. Well, I miss it. That might go back and listen. <laughs> She's like, that's the only hot. No, wait, but okay. So do you think because we sweat so much, it's because we're so hot already, we run hot. So it's like okay. adding the heat is maybe like bad. Like we're the in opposite. hot yoga so every day. The opposite, actually. Okay. If you throw me into humid weather, my armpit starts, stop sweating. If you throw me into cold and dry, my armpit starts sweating. It's this really weird thing. Cause, and I went to, I learned this at a nail salon, my, the nail tech, this um, older, this older lady, she was like, cause my, she's, my feet and my hands were sweating. And I was like, oh, can you get me like a cold towel? She was like, no, the opposite. I'm going to get you a really Really hot warm towel put it on you and then magically my shit just start stopped sweating she was like it's actually the opposite i was like it's no wonder when i'm in hawaii my armpits aren't sweating like they do in california wait this is like how they say if you have dry skin you should not put oil on your skin because then your skin will not produce any mm-hmm. oil of its own like it's like a reverse thing i'm not sure okay or sure. like when you have add if you take adderall you're like it's <laughs> calming you down Oh, yeah. Yeah, but what is that called? Like paroxysmal? I think you have hyperhidrosis. Oh, no. Yeah, we have hyperhidrosis. I I do. Obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But what is that um, thing that effect called? Is it called like um, paradoxical effect when something has the opposite effect of its like, like for instance. That's exactly what it's called. Paradoxical, right? Yes. Paradoxical reaction <laughs> happens son, when a Carlos. person. I googled it. That's why I'm confident. The son of response. when a person the son experiences of the, the opposite of what the drug is intended to do. Oh, like like again with like ADD med- medication. But I do have ADD and I'm high as hell. I'm not taking Adderall to. 
I'm taking out, it'll be like, this is free. This is Coke that a doctor handed me. This is incredible. But when you take like Adderall, oh does God. it kind of just um, slow you down and clear you up or does it speed you up? It's both. I'm definitely not calmed by it. But also my friend that works on Annie with us, he takes a lot of Adderall and he's like, no, 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 it calms me. It calms me. And it's like, you're tweaking. You're like, <laughs> you're a fucking tweaker. Well, for Bob I asked him, I was like, have you smoked crack recently? He's like, just Adderall. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> well, for Bobby, um, when he started taking Ritalin, he was then able to sleep at night. He was yeah, having such know. bad insomnia. Well, some people, Whitney takes Adderall to sleep. I'm always like, are you fucking kidding Wait, me? Wait, it what? works on Bobby. He's able to sleep at night finally because of his mm. medication. It just puts him down. When I was little, my best friend had ADHD. And one time he we flushed all of his, his Ritalin down the toilet and we got in a lot of trouble. Was he a real person or... <laughs> Did anyone think that was a real person? Like <laughs> Esther just found a pills on the street <laughs> and just had a pretend friend. Yeah, basically you're right. Um, your best friend when you were little was a guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh. What? It just makes sense <laughs> <laughs> with your outfit today. <laughs> Thank you. And you had behavioral issues. <laughs> this is why I have problems now. No. Do you guys watch no um, the Pamela Doc? I'm I watched wondering. a little bit of it, and I was a little bit. Bored. I don't what i was bored the first she was walking through the thing i go okay let's get to it you need who raped you <laughs> i mean her babysitter i didn't get there i didn't get to that oh one. my god yeah I, off. I thought it was actually i have a prediction that this doc is going to make other docs like this happen because i found her to be so honest and vulnerable like when do we ever hear celebrities that they're like i was doing these drugs i was we were drinking like it was just such an eye-opening like tale i don't know i i thought it was really interesting but it did make me sad because it, it was like oh she's like she's a love addict She's totally love at it. Yeah. um i thought she was love. so gorgeous i thought gorgeous. she looked so yeah. beautiful you know, I, she is still Pretty fucking gorgeous. No, but that's yeah. what I was saying because I think she went. There was like a time where they were showing pictures of her. They were using her as like the clickbait where they were like adding like the, you know, the like add like a face filter to people. And make them oh, look like yeah, shit. yeah, 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 yeah. And I never knew what she looked like. And she's so beautiful. She looks so great. She's so pretty. What did you think of it? I, yeah, that's I, I same takeaway that she loved feeling intensely and deeply in love with people. And she would get into like a lot of these relationships. It's kind of relatable when you're that young and with the type of trauma that she had. I mean, she was fucked up as a kid. Also, how old fucked was she up. when she really blew up? She was very young, right? Wasn't she like early 20s? Yeah, and she was a, um, she basically got discovered at a football game and she became a Labatt Blue girl, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden they were like, come to LA and pose for Playboy. And then was was she Tim the Toolman Taylor's girl for was it Baywatch first and then that or probably that? Baywatch first yeah Baywatch first <laughs> Baywatch first okay it was interesting also like a lesson in if you just kind of go I feel like she was just went with the flow of where her life went which is totally awesome and when your life is like that exciting it makes sense but I could tell like a takeaway I had was. It seemed like she wanted a different kind of career, but because she was like, oh, you guys get implants, I'll get implants, and like just followed like what was right in front of her or something. Does that she's, make sense? She seemed really free-spirited, but also yeah. so funny and witty. And you yeah. even back then when, when she would do like Jay Leno interviews or she would go on Howard, they were saying some crazy shit to her. She always like snuck it in there and yeah. they never heard what she said, but she did try to stand up for herself a lot. I loved seeing that, yeah. And the way that they treated her and talk to her it is so shocking to see how they're just like matt lauer is like i never thought i'd ask a woman about her breasts and she's like mm. okay. it's like or yeah larry you usually just grab him without asking right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that age god really forbid perfectly yeah. <laughs> for you or larry king being like are those implants I'm like what the fuck dude Ew. I mean, I totally do that to everyone all the time, though. I've never not been like, are those real? <laughs> so I'm the Larry King of this group. <laughs> but you're allowed to yeah. be a Larry King in that way. But him, Larry King is not allowed to be. Yeah, you're right. You're you right, know. Right. Right. Also, do, do you do we think that like basically the leaked sex tape is why they're as famous as they are? Is that like if that had never happened, would, would they be more famous or less famous type thing? rule like would she have taken a different direction in her career i don't know it's just it, it was a lot to think about as a as a young 
woman who aspires to be a, a yellow, young blonde babe. With one day. <laughs> a twenty two year old with fake tits. Yes, <laughs> you a can lot do to it. Learn. You honestly are the only one that could do that. Thank you. I loved it that day you came in looking like her. I really liked that. I'll come back. I'll do it again for you. That was I'll never idea. tell you when. Okay. It's going to be sad when I show up and it's the day you're not here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Brittany's on. I'm like, oh, sorry, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I clicked out. It was not giving me the vibes I wanted to have the first. Honestly, Annie, it might have been really triggering for you. I'm. Like, it on. starts off with a heavy That's, diddle. She has yeah. ADD. That's why you didn't get through it. Yeah. That's what I really think. Yeah. I'm diagnosing you. No, well, okay. On Dr. Drew was on my podcast, my soul podcast last week, and someone commented because he started, he was like, I really want to talk to you about Adderall. And I was like, okay, great. And then someone's like, wow, they edited that part. And I was like, no, none of us were on Adderall. We just forgot to continue the conversation. <laughs> ADD got us in the middle of an ADD conversation. But I want to know his take on Adderall. Well, he talks about it on Tiger Belly. Mm. He goes really well, into it because he. Is it out yet? Um, it's episode. out maybe it'll be out by the yeah, time by, the, by the time this comes out it'll yeah. be out but he goes into it he explains Drew, thanks why. for doing our rounds <laughs> we love you watch the annual episode with him it's so cute esther so you're officially in your clean girl era <sighs> no i definitely reject clean girl culture i think clean girl culture is like so quintessential millennial which by the way and i think you guys will relate to this i have realized i and i think you guys too we are so we got left behind in millennial culture because like it was so about, especially social media, like perfect, curated, like clean girl aesthetic, your house is clean and like your white kitchen. And I just feel like the tides are shifting and like- so the dirty bitches. <laughs> yes, and now we can kind of be ourselves, like we're more accepted in the mainstream culture. Well, you know what I'm seeing in you now, right now, is you're being grunge. Grunge wasn't necessarily actually dirty. It was the appearance of filth. I definitely am leaning into like 90s yeah. slacker. But, but we were there. That's what's such an exciting thing. Like to be, to for us to not embrace this new, like bringing it back would be so devastating. Yeah. I don't know why, like, I don't know why we would ever not just fucking lean back into that shit we wore. Right. Like I, Jankos. I'm for sure still fixed, like mentally fixated on like cleanliness, like, like my own personal hygiene yeah. is like super important to me. I, I, we t we've talked about this. I don't know if it's like conditioned or if it just if I just feel better when I'm always bathed twice, three times a day. Mm. Wait, scrubbed, okay. scrubbed, scrubbed. But I, I, I shower very, very frequently. Yeah. If I'm in a bad mood, I know I just need to jump in a water. Do you think this is better. like why you were thinking like nurse was the way because you were already like fucking <laughs> surgically ready you're like put the fucking go. gloves she's on halfway I, there yeah like she's already scrubbed Just by having clean hands <laughs> but then um but i think that's why i allow myself to dress pretty sloppy most days um because i know like i'm super like scrubbed up i like so that like, contrast yeah. mm -hmm. do you um okay what is it about a shower that will like fix your problems everything it's a baptism. It's like you get mm -hmm. baptized every time, whatever it is. Like it's the same way that the Japanese, like when they say, like if you're going through a heartbreak, heartache, you cut the end, the, the end of you trim the tip of your hair because that's where the emotions are. Because you're splitting, so yeah. So you're just like, you know, kind of as a way. It's like um, I guess it's like a, a a way to get rid of whatever excess feelings are there. Mm. I feel the same way with water and not just showers, That's like going in a pool <laughs> or like getting in the ocean. You just like rinse off the bullshit. Yeah. I yeah. think if I didn't have hair, like if mm. I was a boy, I would shower a lot more. It's the getting your hair wet. Yeah. Like obviously you can put it up in a ponytail or whatever, but then you're not getting like the full being under the stream. But I love doing, do you ever go in the shower and visualize that it's all light coming on you? I can answer you. I never, never go in the, the shower. shower. <laughs> Guys, like I think if there's one thing we all agree on, it's Nutrafol. Nutrafol is it. It works. We love it. It's our, it's our mommy and our daddy and our baby. I have so many bottles of Nutrafol. I put one in each of my luggages because if I forget it, I'm devastated. Um, I have it in my backpack. I have one next to my bed. I just have it with me. Four pills a day. My hair is good. My hairdresser is always proud of me. 
Like if we ever went on tour, it should be Nutrafol presents Trash Tuesday because <laughs> we are so in like we're in bed with Nutrafol. Yeah. We I I use it, Dave uses it, you guys use it. Like we're just all in on it. And Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness and visible scalp coverage. And I've totally learned this from you, Kalila. Like the whole thing with Nutrafol is that they don't promise an overnight fix like all these other brands out there. It's truly like they're focusing at the root causes of the issues. It's the it's vitamins, it's minerals that actually will help fix you. It takes time. It's not like a quick fix. Like this is the real deal. Yeah, it's it's working inside out basically. And um for me I knew Nutrafol was legit because it's you know, again, like you said, not an overnight fix, but by, I would say even as early as like the two and a half month mark, I started to see my baby hairs and like what was previously like kind of like a thinning area or what I considered to be a bald patch that would never grow back. I was sure would never grow back. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden I'm seeing these like, th- like my hair sprouting yeah. up again and just like, just overall being more like, oh, like also my hair grows really fast on Nutrafol. I just had a haircut like three months ago and now it's like back down to like my waistline. When I'm on the road, people are always like, is it true about Nutrafol? And I'm like, yes. No, I know. There's always comments like, is Nutrafol? Yes, you guys. It is. I swear. I swear. It's (laughs) it's pretty simple. You're putting in the correct vitamins and minerals into your body that supports like hair health. And it's as simple as that. And I jack my hair up. Once it's, once Nutrafol grows it out, I you destroy it. I curl it. it, I dye it, I clip shit into it. So it's like, look, I need to do everything I can to. And in a clinical study. From going bald. And in a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo promo code TRASH to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time plus free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code TRASH. If you're stewing over a medical problem, anything from, hey, you know, my eyes are a little dry and leaky. I said my eyes are little. I was like, guys, that's <laughs> an, a you problem. <laughs> Doctor can't fix that. <laughs> or, you know, my my nether regions are feeling a little, you know, some type of way as of recent. Crusty? I don't need to go to, sorry to say this, I don't need to go to my um, Trash Tuesday group chat to look for a doctor anymore. <laughs> but you should. I mean, we're the ones that go to you. We have nothing to offer you except questions about our own vaginas. <laughs> I can go to ZocDoc. And over there, I there are real patient reviews of doctors in every single field and every single expertise. And these are real patient reviews and you know what like what better way what better way to feel confident about the doctor you're choosing than ZocDoc I am so tired of how hard it is to get a doctor it's like by the time you need one you're so sick you feel like crap and then you go somewhere and the doctor sucks is mean or bedside annoyed man. with you. Yeah. You're like, what the? And that's something that someone would 100% pick up on and put in a review on ZocDoc. You would know ahead of time. Oh no, I don't want to go back to my life before I use ZocDoc. I was just ended. I always ended up in like the worst waiting rooms with rude doctors, and like now I'm actually vetting them before. And it's crazy that like I would go to Yelp before I go to a restaurant and I wasn't doing that for doctors. Like that is so much more important to be going to ZocDoc and like figuring that out first. Thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc are there to help you. They listen like a friend and give you the expert care you need. ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Go to ZocDoc.com slash trash and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash trash. ZocDoc.com slash trash. <laughs> Have you guys, this is, this is something that has gotten me willing to get in a shower. Showering in pitch black. I saw a TikTok mm. about it. People uh-huh. were saying like it really increases the sensations and the pleasure of, of being showered. Is- so I'll tell you how I shower. I don't turn my lights on. I have a night light. And that's all that illuminates my shower. I put good music on and I just, it, 
I don't know. It feels so fucking good, you guys. Just the heat on my skin. Probably a little too hot. Probably dries out my hair a little bit. But it just is so fucking Like it hot as hell. There. Yeah. Like, Todd's terrible. always like, why is it so hot? I'm like, grow up. <laughs> fucking pussy. But I think that, okay. So I have this theory that women can handle. I think we really are like mother of dragons. I think that women can handle more extreme shower heat than men can. I don't know why, but I think girls take hot fucking showers uh, and yeah. guys are like that's too hot is your bath hot it's so hot like i need to burn my skin i need to hurt <laughs> are we gonna ever see is this esther gone the hairy leg and then the shaved leg is that esther gone or is she still here <laughs> look no esters are ever gone because that's all... a good esther that was an <laughs> esther wow <laughs> there's never gonna be that annie <laughs> Really? I would never show my hairy leg like that. Really? Mm -hmm. Wait, that's shocking to me because I felt like Not that Not on was... purpose, like you might catch an ankle. Okay, because I, I feel like in our Esther Annie Venn diagram, that felt in the middle to me. No, because Annie and I were baby sluts. Yeah. And when you're baby slut, you really pick up on these habits very early on of shave your legs. Yeah. Because I was humiliated when I first came from the Philippines. I remember a boy, like my, my first week in America, looking at my legs and being like, ew. What are those? Why Why do you have hair on your legs? And I remember just shaving every other day after that. Well, we talked about this on here. I've been really working on it, but where it's like when you go to get a massage from someone, you like shave your legs or you go to get a Same. pedicure. Mm -hmm. Like, But it's like, I don't want to have a sexual relationship. Like I, I want to deter sexual relationship with this person who's right. giving me the service. So I've been really working on going gross. Yeah. Or even going to the nail salon and you have to expose this. Yeah, um, I'm just like, let's lead. go bushed. Let's go out. Check it out. I will say, though, that um, I know that maybe I wanted to put out a PSA um, on behalf of my favorite lady waxer. And I've been seeing a lot of like waxers on TikTok basically trying to, um, you know, put out the same PSA. It's like, you have to wash your shit. Oh, before you get before waxed. Before you oh, get don't waxed. don't fucking stink. It's not their job to clean <laughs> you with a baby wipe and just, you know, take in the aroma. Like, that's so fucking rude. No, it's nasty, yeah. They're already doing a service for you. Also, like, here's what you can do. If you're having a busy day, you don't have time to fucking go home and take a shower or whatever, go and wash, pretend you you're going to hook up with a guy. Like, put your fucking mm -hmm. butt up on the sink and scrub that shit in the bathroom before you go in. What are Every time I go into a waxing place, there's always a puddle of water next to the sink because bitches know what they're up to. Yeah. I just remember, no, I always go clean, go super clean because I'm... Nobody believes you. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like, <laughs> even your own face. <laughs> no, I just remembered why I got addicted to... I Why I'm waxing consistently is because I got addicted to... After I leave the wax, I'm like a shell of my former self because of the pain. Feels you great. get a high. Yes. I forgot. Yeah. It's getting through the fear, the pain. God, it hurts. Side. Like it, it feels so feel good, bad. though. No, no, it does not feel good. But it's like a good hurt. Yes. It's like a it's, slap. No, the sides don't hurt as bad. The asshole doesn't hurt. But the pussy pad. Oh, my yeah, God. I, pain. I, I always do like a half jolt up. It's so painful. I just never feel like I had a good waxer or, or maybe I, I have, have a the great same waxer. problem that you my. have where it's like I my hairs are going. Enough. So it's always like I'm always like this is not all done. Like it doesn't feel done. I have a great waxer. Come to maybe I'll. Oh, no, we've talked about. At I'll do both. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can see. I'll do better. both. Because I've just been honestly, I just manscape. <laughs> I do, I do. You can bleep it if they're not our spots. On but I do. I fucking. Um, what are you guys' plans for Valentine's Day? Um, comedy store here. I know, but with your partners, <laughs> with your partners, he do you guys do Valentines? Now. No, no, he's gone. He that's his time off. <laughs> yeah, it's a different Valentine. Yeah. No, he's gonna be out of town, so I, I'm free. I <laughs> um don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. What about you? Nothing. Yeah, we'll probably. I don't have a spots. partner. I'm available for gallant. Gallant. This is so, so funny. So, uh, guys, I got you a special Valentine's Day food. I see them, Pete. Oh, yeah. They're oysters. I want the biggest one. Okay, before I consume um, raw shellfish, I also just want to say something. <laughs> I have a c couple questions to ask. Okay, so we have oysters here. Uh, one How thing, fresh are these? in case you don't know. Just got, them, just got them today. From where? Pete, what is the one? Uh, Kingfish. Okay. It's in Glendale. Oh, great place. Do we have great more place. than I get one fish each? there all the time. Yeah. We have, we have more. 
Can we get um a little bit of a Tabasco or something? Or we don't have y'all don't. Uh, Tabasco. No. Well, if you look in your presents, I do have a little bit of like yeah, there's some presents from Air One for y'all. Uh, are we gonna be charged for this? <laughs> if this comes out of my payment, I'll fucking kill you. I love oyster. This is on on us. I got salt. Oh, I'm the crushed pepper. I'm the I salt. got hang on, hang on, guys. It's gonna be Thai seasoning. <laughs> Rice? Oh no, it's sesame seeds. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm glad you got it at Kingfish. I love it there. No so Tabasco I feel like sauce. this is um that's fine. I know you don't want it. No, any. I I can I tell you I'm not I'm not kidding you. I tried oysters for the first time two weeks ago in New York and I did not like it. Was but it why? on camera? Do we care if you like it? <laughs> do you want numbers, bitch? What do you want? Just ask Oyster her, they're numbers. delicious. <laughs> Pretend it's Kalila's mm. Puss. Actually, it's so good, Esther. I, I, mm. try. Try it. Mm. <laughs> Honestly, my tummy hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Put it I'll have it. Then. I'll you have, have it. to put the shell in your vagina. That I'll hands. do. Can I have more? Yeah. Reinforcements, we have... Carlos. I love oysties. Me too. So All good. day. Dozen or bust. We went, we got Randy's balls out and, um, Again? We got them. No, back in the day, <laughs> we put them back in. We went. And we and we had the as you, I probably told you guys. I had the vet. Yes, please. Oh no! I had the vet give me the balls in a jar. I hate this. And that night, Todd and I went out for oysters. No. And I'll tell you, identical. <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna be me for Halloween, you get two oysters. You throw them in a jar. You carry them around. You said those are Randy's balls. Oh. Esther, what it, what what about oysters? Do you not enjoy? Okay, so I am actually a new seafood person. This is so funny. That like I just... put one here. I love scallops. I love okay. sushi. I don't like the consistency. And you guys all know my famed of story. Pussy? Of when <laughs> this is not helping your queer baiting argument. You all know when Dave, yeah, tried to get me to eat octopus. I started crying, mm -hmm. of, like, which he should have fucking known. What was that? <laughs> yeah, Dave knows better than anyone else. Just give her some popcorn. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay, so it's a consistency thing because yeah. the taste is very mild. Is it though? It's very mild. It tastes like. Maybe a little bit of the ocean, which is like a wonderful flavor. Wait, can I just say something about Bryce bringing us this brand Cholula. new Cholula? Where was the giant... ketchup when we needed it? No, all I'm thinking is that Bryce is just like, has like unused kitchen, <laughs> fully stocked. Who has this? I've never seen a Cholula full size like this. To have that and not ketchup is very suspicious. <laughs> Maybe he had the ketchup, but he didn't give That's what I'm hinting He didn't have at. a care that day. Kyle, what you look frozen? No, is there more? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's me just hungry for more, Esther. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like this eating this pussy is healing my pussy. Yes. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. So the cut recently came out with this like list of like new like rules for behaving in society or whatever. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Okay. So one of them was actually saying that you should take the last bite mm -hmm. and i'm uh, really yeah yeah i thought like attention like, you're not right okay i like that as a we're all just not gonna have the so last I, bite. I came from a family that was very we don't take the last bite and i broke the cycle of that bullshit because it's like, what are we doing this for? Yeah, okay, good. And then you gonna leave inspire it there? others to take the next bite. Yeah. Because they know it's not just going to sit there forever. There was also one that said if you are staying over at someone's house, that even if they don't ask you to, you should strip the sheets. Mm. Always. Mm. Really? So, yeah. okay, this is what I wanted to ask you. Because people stay at my place all the time. Do you ask them to strip the bed? Um, I don't ask them to, but I don't let people stay in my house that aren't bed strippers. Okay, so does that, because I would not have known that I'm supposed to strip the bed. That's why you were never invited to That's what I'm asking, like, because I feel She's like- She's honestly only kicked you out of her house. <laughs> <laughs> would you ask me to, or would you be mad at me if I didn't? I wouldn't be mad, because I know that people like have, um, if if I'm hosting you, I'm, I'm a really easy, host and I'm not going to give you grief about your maps or whatever like I'm I've but only because I've been hosted by other people who like what most recently I stayed 
for a weekend. I had a I had a plan to stay three days with a friend of ours. And um, I was gone after the first night. I mean, the rules of her home was when you walk around the house, can you please tiptoe so that the, the wood floors don't creak and wake me up? Also, when you close the door, can you make sure that you're you're hanging on to the knob and close it before you release it so I don't hear the clicking of the door? Not like I'm shutting the door. Also, can you not fucking breathe? Basically, that she was telling me not to breathe or move or do anything. Like, I was fucking out of there so fast. I'm like, I'm getting a hotel. Bye. I do not. Thank you so you. much. I do not blame you. Although, I will say that I know... Me and my childhood best friend, we had memorized what parts of her grandma's house floor would make sounds and what wouldn't so that we could spy on her brother. <laughs> it wasn't to sneak out and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was to spy on the people that were having fun. <laughs> I was really an early adopter at like watching live stream things, but in real life. Um, okay, so because I was just I the strip the bed one really made me think of you because I was like, oh, I wonder if Kalila would tell me to strip the bed. I feel like that'd be a good exercise for us. But it doesn't matter to me so much. I don't feel icked out. That's just something I do. Mm -hmm. I, that's a that's a, a standard that I hold for myself because like I'm telling you, like I think that Airbnbs do not need to charge me personally a cleaning fee because the way I leave Airbnbs is better than how I than how I got there. Well, Airbnbs, that's the annoying part too. They'll be like, do all of these things and also we're charging you. Right, yeah. So I, which like, I think is bullshit because yeah. like not only like I do all the dishes, I wash the laundry, I wash the towels, like I go overboard. And um, now I have a counter argument to this whole strip the bed thing. How do you know I'm going to change the sheets? When you leave, maybe I want to keep your sheets there. Maybe I want to smell you. Yeah. Maybe I don't change maybe the Maybe we don't for care what you want. <laughs> maybe we don't want you sniffing our stench. <sighs> Just saying, I would opt not to strip the bed because I don't want to assume that you're going to wash the sheets. You want to think that there's a chance someone will roll in your filth? It's, there's no filth in a bed. That you're in? Carlos, as someone shedding. that lays in bed with her, is there not a puddle of blood when she gets up? That's those are usually Dave's puddles. <laughs> yeah, Dave has his own blood. Yeah, <laughs> I am weird about my bed, um, and if it's like a stranger, like my friends, I don't care. Like we can all hang out in the bed, but if I don't know you that well, and like uh, your drool and your scalp smell and your dead tissue is all over my shit, like I don't like the idea of that. But if scalp I like smells you, smells rough. Scalp smell is a big thing for me. Thank you. I feel so validated. When you get someone's hat, you're like, oh. Exactly. You guys are prissy. <laughs> scalp smell, please. You never walk into you're an just, She's so terrified that we've smelled her scalp before. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are like under our nose. <laughs> scalp to nose ratio is you never not tight, safe. Tight. <gasps> You've never walked into an elevator and it's an empty one, but then you, there's like this lingering thick smell of like someone's three day old scalp unwashed. Yeah, because boys, I think, you know don't I think mean? they need. Yeah, I hate it. They don't need the washing. Esther's like, I like it. It reminds me of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Human um, smells are cool, I think. A lot are. I had um, to fly coach. And <laughs> had to. I had to because they don't have a place in intercontinental mm. flights for dogs in first class. So we had a flight coach and I was Wait, manifesting. Wait, that's so fucked up actually. I'm on your side. Wait, that's crazy. Well, it makes sense because you can't really take a dog to another continent. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you you would usually need to like board them or whatever. So they're like, we'll just have the layback. It's the layback seats, but with the layback seats, there's no place to put the dog underneath. Now, look. I don't think I'm better than people that fly coach. I just don't ever want to do it again. <laughs> and so I had to. And Todd and I on the way out, there was an empty seat next to us. It was beautiful. I was like, this is not bad. Coach is pretty good. We saved about five thousand dollars. <laughs> so We're much. chilling. We're feeling great. Like this is awesome. Randy was being a good boy. The way back, I was in my head, I was manifesting, I was gone. Empty seat, empty seat, empty seat. And then I went, there was something in my head that was like, that's greedy. Don't do that. Just go. Don't let them smell. Don't let them smell. But let me tell you about the universe when you're manifesting. They don't hear the don'ts. <laughs> All they heard was someone that smells, someone that smells. <laughs> I was so mad. I was trying to not, I was trying to let go of my anger at his family because he was in a full family. I'm like, none of these people told him he smells like shit. 
his wife, his kids. Oh my God, remember this happened to us? <laughs> it was, that is one of the funniest things that's ever happened in my entire life. That was painful laughing. Yeah, a man who shit his pants was sitting right in front of us. <laughs> and they gave us a, it was a, a long thing of flight. coffee. They gave us a thing of yeah. coffee to just break open the coffee, to just shove up our noses. It's like, put it in his pants. Wait, but coffee doesn't eliminate the smell. It just cleanses your palate, doesn't that's what it? They, that's all they offered us. That's all, we, what were we gonna do? Pull the man's pants down and wipe him? Yeah. I already, I went to the child. I literally went to the fucking French Canadian bitch who was already fucking hated my existence, okay? <laughs> Her baby was sitting there and we were like, it's gotta be the baby. Like, it's Wait, just so much. Annie, the people sitting near us on a flight hated <laughs> us? That's so weird. Esther kept putting the thing down. I was hitting that lady's <laughs> The woman was like leaning into Esther's space. She was like, oh. <laughs> but anyway, so. Yeah, I went and I approached, I had to say to the woman, like, you, there's shit in your kid's diaper. And she was like, there is not. She was so mad. She pulled his asshole out. She showed me his <laughs> asshole. And then it was like, oh, my God, it's the man in front of us. He was not that old. Well, what was the deal? Like, was he? He um, shit his pants. Is, Everyone knew but him. But was he, like, disabled? Like We never so. talked to him because it was too awkward. We're to not like, still in touch with him. <laughs> I we am. our self esteem is a little bit higher than that. Okay, fine, I am. I haven't. Esther's cheating on Dave. Do do butt. He's she's not. what is she gonna turn down a guy that's got extra diapers in his butt? <laughs> <laughs> but the guy when he stood up to go to the bathroom, this is how bad it smelled. When he stood up to go to the bathroom, finally, every person on the plane looked to see if there was a doo doo mark on his pants. <laughs> like it was crazy. And when he came back, he must have thrown his underwear out or something. That was the flight where John Campanelli was up in first class with. Jim Carrey. And it was just like, coach. what did you do? <laughs> um, suppose we were all single and we all found, which is highly unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> highly unlikely, because I feel like we all have very different tastes in dudes. But suppose we were like, you know what? That's one guy I would want to be pregnant by. Would we be okay Sister retrieving wives? sperm from the same donor? Sister yeah. moms? Like... A guy who I just is. can't imagine us all liking the same guy. I can't no, either. I don't think it, I, you have I, always been in a relationship though since I've known you, so that never has happened to us. But I've never, no offense, and no offense to you. <laughs> there's no one in your roster same. that I would go near. <laughs> same. We have no. I honestly, there's no one in my roster except Todd. I would go near too. In much respect, <laughs> actually, same. I love Todd. Todd. We love Todd, but. Um, we share, I, we have some crossover, but I have crossover with her too. No, no, we've not hooked up with the same guys. I'm she's just saying, like, I forgot to tell you all of the bank, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> there are some guys that we both find attractive and we, there's some yeah. guys we both find attractive as well. And I feel like we're giving one man too much power. No, it's just a donor. Oh, a donor. We're not in a relationship with him. <laughs> so do we know the guy? You know what would be fun would it be to see what, what they half of our- Oh, who's is hotter? <laughs> but just like, who is like, how much of us is in this fucking kid? Like whose egg yeah. has like the most- yeah, They would be friends with each other though, the kids. Like They'd if, be siblings, idiot. <laughs> yeah. <that's> <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if my first one- I think might try to fuck ours. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> but yours were a step. A step. We have Not to keep half. clarifying that. None no, of half. It. it wasn't half. There step. is a half. Possible. No, we don't know that. That was a cousin possible. Yeah. But oh, come on, who hasn't accidentally fucked their cousin? I keep trying to like reach out to him and, and nothing. He's traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I gave my cousin opportunities and he did not take them. So, Will you try to fuck your cousin? <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a crush on my cousin when I was little. Really? Yeah, as hell now. My molester was my older cousin. You jealous? Mm, how much older? Uh, Like 10. Damn. You guys jealous? You want it? You want it? <laughs> you want me to be I would rather relose my virginity <laughs> than be in this moment. <laughs> I would rather get, I did lose my virginity on Valentine's Day. You did on the waterbed? I did on the waterbed. It was Valentine's Day because I remember he got me, there were four roses. I was like, that is a weird number. And then when I went oh my up God, to the wait. bathroom to pee out the condom he left inside me, the, his mom was missing four roses from her bouquet. <laughs> mm. That's sweet. You guys, I just did something so sacrilegious. No one called banana break and I just started eating the banana. I think if they got it's here, then it's like, yeah, game. yeah, it was just a part of the. We've, oyster. This has been a five hour podcast. If they've, I think it's been 30 minutes. Really? <laughs> yeah. I was like, damn, we were going, 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 going. Split it into two, two parter. Mm. 
Um, Wait, that's it's kind been of fifty-seven. Just so he now. stole roses from his mom's mm-hmm. to give it to you. Yeah, he also stole stole jewelry from her, furniture from people, and but ended up in prison. Left the um, condom got left in your mm-hmm. panini. 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 Panini and my panini. <laughs> mm-hmm. you pick my too. Young, <laughs> pick I, you know what's panini. so cute? My sister and I call it non-bread. <laughs> Wait, why is we're like? How's your non feeling? Oh, I love that. But non is just one. These little girls my sister used to babysit and then I would go with because I was lonely. They called it a tootie and they would say ouchie tootie. <laughs> but why was it hurting? <laughs> <laughs> How often were they ouch tootie? Why, why was I there? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, the origin story is coming out. <laughs> no, my childhood sexual abuse was with girls my own age. Okay. And they said no, and you said yes. <laughs> you said yes loud enough for two. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. My mom was always like, "Did anyone have a lesbian?" She, my, whenever we're, I was in college, she was visiting. She was like, "Does has anyone ever had a lesbian experience?" Raise your hand. And we're like, "What are you doing?" Your mom did that. Yes, it was like we weren't playing truth or dare. She's like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, mom. Was this at swim practice? <laughs> <laughs> we were all waiting. To, we're lining up. <laughs> You know, I do wish that my mom had been, we'd been in the same age group at some point because I would have liked to beat her ass at swimming. Mm. I love you, mom. I forgive you, but I would have beaten her ass at swimming. Mm. Wait, my Ralfer, my uh, my guy Jan, who I've been going to, the massage guy, he told me today I'm very sturdy. He goes, wow, you're very sturdy. Like her bottom That's half. That's such a like, compliment. Well, you I have feel a big sturdy. ass. That's like a... I feel so sturdy. And Your my center mom of gravity her... is like real good. Like a, a, a typhoon could knock you down. He told me, he's like, you would have been a great farmer. <laughs> 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 but you know, like being, you seem really sure-footed. Like, and just like nothing's going to knock you down. But you throw some dance steps in there. <laughs> it's all, it's all over. <laughs> That's where I come in. I know. I do want to learn to dance. I want to play. Into, I made my nails shorter so I could learn guitar. I thought you were going to say because you This did. is a midlife crisis. <laughs> Maybe. I'm like, am I gay? Can I play guitar? Amy, throw me your napkin. It's showing in her shot. Oh, my God. Kalila has one in her hand every day. It's true, but that's for she my sweat. So do I, bitch. Just not in my palms. Actually, mm-hmm. not my palms. I don't want to brag. Not in my palms. <laughs> do you sweat weirdly anywhere? No. <laughs> It's so weird that you're, do you feel I, left out at all? Are you proud of it? No, because I, I'm jealous. I am jealous. I do have- Because we have a thing that you don't know. No, have. it's because I think sweating is very good for you. And I think it's weird that I'm holding Not, on, I'm keeping it in. I don't think that's what it is. I think the body normally regulates itself that you are slowly sweating, but it's not like a- Well, you I, know the reason why people sweat, it's- Trauma? No, I mean, natural oh. sweating. Let's say when Here's you work you. out, why, <laughs> why do you sweat when you work out? But don't say you. That's confusing. Or, or, or like, general, like about? people, not you, but like what? humans. You're releasing. No, it's your body's way of trying to um, temperature boy. regulate. So it's oh, trying to cool you down. Oh, like mm-hmm. a dog panting. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, I just can't. Maybe we have to speak in Jacob terms. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Armpit sweat is weird, Esther. It's like every time you put something on, it's just soaking wet. Like when I was in fourth grade is when it started happening. I would just be sitting there in class and just drips. It would just start mm-hmm. dripping. Like tears were coming out of my armpits. And then I bet you're like embarrassed so it gets Humiliated. Worse. That it, makes it worse. It was such a relief for me the first time I saw Cameron Diaz. I think she won like an MTV movie award. She had a pit. And she made fun of herself and made fun of her armpit sweat. And she like put it on like maybe Lucy Lou or uh-huh. like Drew Barrymore. She's like, oh, these girls are here for my armpit sweat. The first time I saw that, I was like, oh my God, yes. it's not just me. That's how I yes. felt when Fergie pissed herself. <laughs> <laughs> Fergie pissing herself is, I do have to say, Fergie, what Thank you, you did for America. Wait, I didn't even know this. What happened? Pull it up. There's like a famous photo and who knows what it if, what it is, you know. Did she own it it's though? It's me. <laughs> I think she did. She had to, she pissed all, she was wearing khakis. Look, it's a rock star lifestyle. Sometimes you pee. It's like the greatest thing that's ever happened. Also, what an iconic Maybe outfit. it's sweat. That looks like, I don't know. I think sweat might be worse than pee, honestly. Mm. My sweat marks after I work out, though, do look like piss. Oh, no. I've, listen, I told you I was on stage when I was in D.C., which I'm coming back. Come see me at D.C. Comedy Loft. Last time I was there, <laughs> a girl in the audience goes, oh, my God, it's so wet. 
<laughs> and I'm like, what? And then I was like, oh my God, I sweat, bitch. Fuck you. <laughs> she was so horrified. She had to heckle. She couldn't even like yeah. let it happen. Another thing that was on the cut article was that like if you are in a relationship it's really rude to openly be naive about dating apps and i'm wondering if hmm. you what if, i i understood that yeah oh wait can it's you right explain here. it to me like it, don't be loudly naive about dating apps if you're in a relationship so i've so been guilty of this and i never knew that it would be so triggering for people but i will be like I've never been on a dating app. Oh, I don't know how it that works. it's rude to the person that's on dating app. Yeah, right. But but from my perspective, I was always like, oh my god, like FOMO, like that seems fun. Yeah, but, Candy Crush, but you have a crush on the person. Esther, you never took your. <laughs> <laughs> they eat your candy out. <laughs> I would take my friends um, who are single, get on their dating apps, yeah, and choose the fun. dude, swipe for them. So I was like, I, I could so never crazy. feign Actually, like that's trust. Yeah, and they would be like, what the fuck, Lila? And I would just do that for them because it was fun for me. And also because anytime I felt FOMO, like what is out were there? Were you doing a like, job or were you being evil? No, I was never. I was really genuine about it because I'm like, I was curious to see what was out there. Right. And boy, did it, was it grim. And that's why I think I hung on for 10 years with Bobby. I was like, if yeah, that's some, um, you know, but I was never, I could never like feign like not knowing because I was actively... It going know, into people's shit. Yeah, going to other people's shit and choosing their partners for them. I don't think it's not no. I mean, I understand that it's like you swipe one way or the other, but I think there's still like a lot of mystery around it for some reason. Like, oh, like, I don't know what. what it's a culture that you weren't involved yeah. in because it's like you've been dating Dave for so long that it like even if it was kind of around back then, it wasn't like a thing you it wasn't the way you meet people yeah now it's like now, such a the number almost have you ever had an online boyfriend myspace boyfriend friendster boyfriend zanga boyfriend um i don't know facebook Tumblr. boyfriend no. nothing so no. in that no tinder say i i met bobby through tinder oh, so that's right i forgot about that so i guess i've you know like partook in that must have been it, right, right when tinder like opened yeah it was right he was my first and only date and so that was kind of like fun. I was like his 90th, I think. But <laughs> You knew um, who he was? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I had seen him like it's a exciting. year before. Yeah. Like, Ooh. I was just like, well, I had saw him a year earlier at the comedy store and did he you followed Chris Rock. No, but I was so impressed because I went there to not see him at the comedy store and he followed Chris Rock. It was like an Oscar weekend and he like just crushed. I remember that weekend. And I remember thinking, oh my God, like, and I remember crossing him in the hallway and like hearing his voice. I'm like, oh, he's a really hot voice. But I always like, I I've, I just grew up in Asia. I think Asian guys have always been hot. Like it's not it's weird I that love, Americans are just catching on to like Asian I like can't hot. believe that like I met my guy and he's Asian. It's like, I wish I had had like access to this knowledge that I have now of how fucking amazing yeah. it is to date Asian guys before. Not to fetishize them, but- I know you're in a relationship, but do you start to slowly look at Asian I guys think Asian guys are like, so hot now. Yeah. Full Asian, half Asian, quarter Asian. Yeah. I smell it out too. I'm like, ooh, that hair's a little darker than, <laughs> than the face shape. I go, there's some Asian in there. Oh yeah. yeah, Dude, I was so, the guy, the guy from White Lotus is so hot. Oh, you, But okay, anyone so would hot. think he's hot. No, I didn't think he was hot at all until he beat what's his name's ass in the in ass the water. Ass then I was like, "Oh, there you go." Now they have you're to take hot. it to like your place, like the the water. <laughs> yeah, take it for land. For because you, previous to that, it was almost like, "What are you about? Like, why are you so like stiff? Why do you run every morning?" Oh, I like, don't mind the stiffness. He's hot. He is. Really I hot. like. He's, wait, I he's like our sperm stiff. donor. Is okay, <laughs> should we DM him? <laughs> we could try. We just. I'm like Todd. Three, it's yours. We need three sperms. That's all we need. <laughs> Esther. Three. Let's one up our chances. Esther, no, we can To even multiple. get one out. <laughs> it's what, 200,000 each time they jizz? Is it? Yeah. Damn. Or more than that. No, it's, no, it's not. Millions. It's, millions. it's millions. It's millions. It's millions. Sorry, millions. I was wrong. It's what? 200 million. Oh, I thought you said dollars. Every I was like, dollars. <laughs> very cheap. Oh. No, I was like, like I thought I was supposed to be like, one jizz comes out at a time. One sperm. I was like, oh boy. Yeah, I think you get like 500,000 for a million dollar. or something, right? <laughs> Dave has this frozen sperm from like, he, he froze sperm in his 20s. And I always bring it. Like he, at the frat? 
At Harvard? He was like... No, like, <laughs> and he has it in, like, some medical facility. And he, I always, like, accuse him of gatekeeping it for me because I always bring it up. And I'm like, we have that. And he's like, no, you can't have it. I'm like, who are you saving it for? Why? Wait, is, is it for public use? Dies or something? No, it's not for public use. No, it's because in his 20s when he was diagnosed with... Um, uh, arthritis, RA or ERA, JIA, yeah. the same thing. But um, the medication he went on like could fuck with your sperm. So just mm -hmm. as a safety precaution, they had him do it. So you have a young Dave's sperm. Yeah, but he won't. He's gatekeeping it. He won't let me have if it. You, he'll let you have it. What's crazy is that that might be more optimal sperm. I think it's better. Yeah, that's what I've said to him, and he's weird. Like he, I don't know. He's like very traditional. He doesn't want to use do it. anything. Yeah, but. We have the requirements right here to become a sperm donor if you want to see. I don't qualify, by the way. Too short. Yep. And um, I didn't. As as healthy, quality. legally allowed to work in the U.S. We know he's a Mexican. He's not really. Able to be <laughs> Wait, this is so let him do this fucked up. The table. Wait, why is it fucked up? Because it's like five eight or That's taller. Weird. Where it's yeah. like, why is that? College that... graduate too. So you have to be weird. wealthy and tall. Yeah, that is such bullshit. Yeah. A college graduate. Bobby I don't give wouldn't a shit. qualify. Yeah. A lot of great people I know wouldn't qualify. Yeah. Listen, I don't know if Todd's associate degree really counts. They say it, but is, is it? <laughs> I think it does, actually. There's nothing funnier than Todd's. I love Todd's associate's degree. I, you know, a lot it's of- It's so much better than- Why did I go to college for no reason, by the way? Wait, by the way, is this the government's way of telling women, like, only breed with men who fall, who fall under this these criteria? Yeah. Boring. This is such a boring criteria, fucking- um, five foot nine college bro get the fuck out of here yeah, like give so me a broke of... artist yeah give me his weird sperm i want a short short sperm donor <laughs> me too i want when he's a jerk off in the cup i want the cup to be taller than him. <laughs> <laughs> okay i want assistance to be needed <laughs> hoist him up oh and what automatically disqualifies you is obviously having an std having ever had it but like what if i never disclose it um, you likely get uh, tested. You don't have no, 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 no. Currently, let's say I've had, let's say I'm a man and I'm, I've say, had gonorrhea. <laughs> I've had chlamydia. Like I wouldn't be allowed to donate. I don't know actually because Kalila, if you there. had a penis, do you know how much you would change all the trans arguments? Like people <laughs> would be like, what do you so mean? trans positive? If if <laughs> that <laughs> bitch came out, people would be like. We're no longer looking at gender. We're gonna all just fuck Kalila. Oh, imagine if I was just like, I had penis this whole time. Yeah, people would yeah. be like, okay, it's it's ended. Wait, would that shock you if I said like, hey guys, yes. like <laughs> I've actually, you know, I've- Shock, wet her up. Yeah. I would just accept you however- It would be the best of all there. worlds. Whatever you have <laughs> under there is just fine with me. <laughs> Thanks, Esther. This is someone who could be- people could think is a trans guy I <laughs> several times in the comments <laughs> i'll say this i have i know you want to bang me <laughs> there was a woman i'll just i'll say this there was a woman who i i have like a few women that like i you know i have like particular crushes on and there is this one woman um was kind of like you know, she was kind of a public figure and I kind of knew her casually and I was really attracted to her. Like I really had a crush on her and she came out as trans and like she's transitioning. She's, you know, I, a male now. So I guess it's, I don't know what the right pronoun, but they are a man now. And I will admit, like, I was like, damn like i was attracted to the previous version is that am i allowed to say that like yeah I don't know. yeah but i like trans mm -hmm. guys are so it's something against trans guys it was no, just that, also I right. no no, no. obviously person. we're trying to be careful we don't want to like hurt anyone obviously everyone do what you want and yeah. be yourselves and we support you but i was like why do i love trans guys so much they're just cute guys that aren't i'm not scared of <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Wow. And like, there's so many, yeah, I don't know. Well, because there are men who also have- Are had women, I'm not, yeah, I'm not as- So they're more understanding them. of what our lives not are. Not that I'm scared of all men or whatever, but I'm like, ooh, a non-threatening- Yeah, I know what you mean. Cute boy. Yeah. But. I think I really um, um, relate to what Dr. Drew said about how we're very deterministic when it comes to our sexual orientation. Like even when I said, oh, I don't eat pussy. So therefore I'm, I probably am not a lesbian. And I'm like, yeah, like that is so limiting. Like, but I do like 
just about everybody. I find like when I look at a girl, I look at a guy, I look at a tra- anybody, it's like it it is if someone is sexual, they'll turn me on. Like I don't yeah. think it really matters like in what shape they come in. If I'm attracted to you, I really just am attracted to people you. People will sneak like a, up on you too. Like people that you yeah. don't think you're attracted to all of a sudden you'll be like Dude, I watch a, like every episode of the first iteration of the L Word. Mm, yeah. And I was yeah. in love with Shane. Yeah, I was me in love too. with Shane and Jenny. Ooh, yeah. Jenny. Shane yeah. was so hot. I love that show. And for a while there, I was like, oh, I could fully like live like this. Yeah. It's just like sexuality is just, it's so One cool. of my, we'll just call her a friend. She had uh, TikTok. She's like, am I a fucking lesbian? Because she was just getting all these like super like, no, I don't even want to say androgynous, but like masculine gay females who are still like, like Shanes, like the Shanes mm-hmm. of the world. She just kept getting them and getting them and getting them. Mm-hmm. Like her husband better shape up or she's going to. Uh... <laughs> I do think what you just said is like where we're, we obviously are moving as a culture where I think we were so programmed that, you know, you're heterosexual like that was taught to us that that was the right thing and if you were gay it's like weird and not normal and now that we're all like oh we we can be all these things we're all kind of like awakening to those options and you really just are circling back to how it was in history yeah like if you even like in filipino mythology um if you um inhabited or felt like you were more or you, you didn't identify with a certain gender or you you were both genders, like you were revered in the communities. Like you were seen as almost like like, um, like a demigod, you know? And so it's like, we're just circling back to our original ways basically, which I think is the most natural way. I think to, to add like gender constructs is to just tr- an attempt to simplify life, but I think it just does the opposite. Well, not to go back to being Esther the anti-capitalist, but they did it to us so that we would all mate and have babies and so our babies would join the workforce. Yeah, that I makes think. sense. But it was when you really- That's why you need that frozen sperm. Yeah. You need a hardworking kid. I've- <laughs> you need that kid on the fucking conveyor belts filling the toothpaste or whatever the fuck your kid's gonna do. Where are they gonna put your kid to work? <gasps> when I was little and I thought that I was gay, I, I'm sure I've talked about this on here before, but I- was literally prepubescent and which is it's I was suicidal. I thought if people at school find out that I liked a girl and kissed a girl. <laughs> She's definitely a lesbian. Guys. I would <laughs> Esther's a full blown lesbian. I was like, I there's no I would not survive. I would commit suicide. I don't want to be alive if kids at school knew that. And like in our lifetime, people yeah. they still feel that way. It, it is surprising when people still strange. feel that you're like, oh Yeah. I wonder if it's like, yeah. If it's societal, if there's just like this little part of you that feels like different. Yeah, I mean, imagine living in a country where this is straight up not allowed, you know. Because it was like that where you were, right? No, no, not where we were. Like, I think um, not in the Philippines, but like, you know, certain countries in like the Middle East and stuff, you know, where it's very big no-no. Yeah. Like, we would have all been... I mean, but they, done away with with they would have knocked about us out for something. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen things each of us have said in this episode. <laughs> no, we'd we'd be handmaids. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Commander. <laughs> I'm handsome today. Oh, just, you're of Todd. What? Of Todd. Of David. Of, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> 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 of of big stuffed animal man. <laughs> yeah, of big stuffed animal man. Where is my boyfriend? Man. You want me to bring him over? It's Valentine's Day. Yes. <laughs> I was like, where the fuck is Valentine's Day? I'll tell you why my pussy really burns. I try to fuck <laughs> the teddy bear. <laughs> big big bear man. You got some plush puss in there. You got some plush. I lubed up his paw and I try to shove it in. We should get a build a bear thing inside it where he's coming. He's like, uh, uh. Ooh. <laughs> Here's my boyfriend. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> He's yeah. so thick butted. <laughs> he really is so like wide butted. He's so hot. He really- That's one of the funniest things you ever said to me. I think we were at the airport and we kept objectifying this one guy. I remember the guy. And we kept looking at him and you're like, oh my, oh, sorry, I just kicked your it makeup bag. Matter. You were like, look at him. He's just so thick butted. And I was like, you're right. He's just so he's thick butted. so sturdy. I'm finding my people. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, you guys, we hope that you all have a happy Valentine's or Galentine's Day. I 
I know I have no plans tonight. Um, yeah, we're gonna, something will happen. Maybe we'll all. Maybe I'll make you eat a rare steak, bloody. Ooh, okay. <laughs> guys, if we don't go for steak, it's their fault, not mine. <laughs> I'll um, do steak dinner with you guys for V-Day. Okay. Yeah, I'm down. Done. Yeah. Extra yeah. booty. Valentine's Day. All right. What's up? We love up? you guys. We'll see you next week with an all new episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment how pretty we are. Goodbye. Oh.